The zombie comic book series turned mega hit TV show The Walking Dead has captured or recaptured the hearts of many fans of zombies in post apocalypses. Anytime such a phenomenon occurs, there is a usually a crossover in entertainment, when a book or movie or show becomes a video game, and that's how it enters our atmosphere here. The Walking Dead has made some successful games with Telltale in the past, being more like choose your own adventure games than action games, however. That's why Overkill's The Walking Dead game was supposed to be different, known colloquially at this point, would team up and work on a The Walking Dead game of their own. Coming off the success of Payday 2, Overkill's The Walking Dead was being hailed by the creator of The Walking Dead during early sessions as the best video game entry in the series history. What happened instead was one of the most bizarre and twisty turns stories we have seen yet. A few months later after launching Overkill's The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead's publishing company, Skybound Entertainment would drop the title altogether in a never-before-seen move. As crazy as that already sounds, the story of Overkill and the Overkill's Walking Dead game has even more mystery and intrigue. In this episode of Death of a Game, we will detail that and more, as we always do in an attempt to solve the case and answer the ultimate question, why did Overkill's The Walking Dead die? Let's get to the mystery so we can answer that. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Pork Bun. Pork Bun is a one-stop shop for all of your domain needs for less than $3. A .bio domain comes included with it. Who is privacy, SSL certificates, and web and email hosting. All included for free with your purchase of a domain. In the world of social media, connection is everything. Content creators, influencers, designers, and all types of users need to engage with their audience and friends and share their online identity. And the best way you can do that is a .bio domain name. Porkbun will allow you to manage all of your helpful and needed links in one place, making things even more convenient. Meanwhile, your clients or viewers get the benefit of your new domain name and website to view. If you're in the process of building a website or thinking about it, you will need a domain name. Click the link in my description and use the code BIONERD to get a domain name for $3 or less. And remember, use code BIONERD and help support the channel and Porkbun. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Porkbun. Back to the video, detectives. The story of Overkill's The Walking Dead starts further back than many of you might imagine. Starbreeze would actually obtain the license for the game as far back as August of 2014. High profile IPs usually take more time to set things up, both a combination of wanting to do things right and bigger. They also come with a hefty amount of red tape, or oversight, which can slow things down too. The project would immediately face delays, but despite such, still managed to show a rough gameplay showing at E3 2015, which had the comic creator Robert Kirkman calling it the greatest game in the IP's history yet, which was unbelievably high praise. Behind the scenes, however, more issues would arise. According to sources, devs were called into a meeting sometime in April of 2017 and told that they would be switching engines from the Valhalla engine to the Unreal engine. Unbeknownst to the fans of the franchise and the upcoming game, this engine switch would invalidate two years of work, greatly further setting back the game and its developmental progress. But it would cause more issues than just having to start over. Reportedly, Starbreeze and Overkill's team had little as 10% who were even aware of how to use Unreal, the new engine, greatly slowing the progress that most devs were having because they were having to learn on the job. To make matters worse, because they were so behind on things, Starbreeze would introduce heavy micromanaging in the way of managers and force a heavy crunch to make up for that lost time. Starbreeze had relied almost solely on the success of their Payday series, but with Payday 2 aging, they were losing revenue. The amount of revenue spent on two years of development with over 150 developers working on a project must have been tremendous, and it was money spent on something that they couldn't afford to spend. While to most, Starbreeze was widely successful due to Payday 2, their reserves were drying up and they were essentially banking everything on Overkill's The Walking Dead. A new character would be teased in April of 2018. Maya would be the second playable character showcased yet. I mention this because the trailers utilized thus far were incredibly high quality, being better than even Telltale's offerings, by a good margin, which was setting with it a high expectation. Overkill's The Walking Dead would be revealed yet again, this time more publicly at E3 2018. Alongside the gameplay drop was the release date announcement, which was set for later in the year. 
the launch of Overkill's The Walking Dead would come four years after the project was first announced, and only a year and some change after the entire engine migration. November 6th, 2018. What happened next was one of the highest profile major IP video game failures yet. Overkill's The Walking Dead, and dear god do I hate the title of the game by the way, feels like Ripley's Believe It or Not, or Tom Clancy's, or I'm like relax, you made one game. But I digress. The game would score a 51 out of 100 from 36 different critics, with user scores being just about the same. IGN would rate the game a 5.3 out of 10, and would state in their review, as long as you've got a group of friends to play with, running the missions, leveling up characters, getting new gear, and cutting through swaths of zombies is fun and overkills The Walking Dead. But it's all wrapped up in a package of multiple frustrations. Technical issues, unavoidable repetition, and a general lack of direction are a serious drag on an otherwise exciting, intense, zombie-filled co-op adventure. However, fans of The Walking Dead may be put off by the lack of source material respect in its story. I feel like the last sentence was an understatement, with nearly all of the cutscenes being developed, if you want to call them cutscenes, in a weird stop-motion PowerPoint type way. There was effectively no story here, especially compared to something like Telltale or even just the general The Walking Dead franchise, which brought with it hefty story expectations. Where was the social politics and drama? While annoying in the show most of the time, that is the essence of The Walking Dead. The reasons for the main entities in the game, squabbling, are already not believable at best, as is whatever goes on in said world. What made early The Walking Dead, in my opinion, so great was a unified goal with a contrasting cast of characters, and none of that was here. Game Informer was even worse in their appraisal of the new action shooter, rating it a 4.5 out of 10. Overkill's The Walking Dead plans to dole out content in season so the current batch of missions will soon expand, but dramatic reworking of most core combat and mission systems are necessary before the game could be worthy of a recommendation. The premise sounds promising for fans of cooperative play, zombie action, and the taut survival storylines implied by the license. The execution fails to meet any of the needs of those groups. You're better off heeding the warning, keep this menacing door closed, and leave the zombies to their gnawing hunger. GI was effectively suggesting fans to skip the game altogether, and I couldn't blame them. When the core mechanic of Overkill's The Walking Dead, as the name sort of weirdly implies, is lifted from Payday 2, yes, the alarm system, you know the game was not going to make any sense, and be needlessly frustrating at the same time. And The Walking Dead you have to be silent, otherwise once things reach a certain level of sound, you will be attacked by a never-ending onslaught of zombies meant to essentially be unbeatable. This means that the majority of the gameplay is sneaking around and trying to use melee weapons to dispatch foes in one of the most cookie-cutter basic combat systems we've seen yet in the zombie genre. None of the pinpoint accuracy or high-paced movement from Dying Light, or the base-building tower defense from, you know, something like Seven Days to Die. Nothing ultimately was redeeming about the game besides just being named The Walking Dead. Even games like Project Zomboid, an indie 2D zombie game, offered far more for zombie enthusiasts. The core gameplay loop in Overkill's The Walking Dead just wasn't fun or convincing enough, and worst of all, it was incredibly repetitive, requiring players to effectively grind through missions they might not even like to properly progress. It doesn't work in the same way as Payday, when in Payday, the whole point of playing the game is getting a payday. Sales were reported to be low within the same month of launch, which was a horrible sign of only worse sales to come. Overkill's The Walking Dead was able to sell only 61,000 copies or so on Steam, and overall sold under 100,000 copies. The only regions that the game was doing well in was China and Russia. By December on Steam, the peak population had dropped from 14,000 players to 4,133 players. While for some watching, you might question why this even matters. Can't you just play the game offline, right? Well, no. Overkill's The Walking Dead was always online, which meant that you could not play it offline, so the online population would matter because like other games we've covered on this series, like Marvel Avengers and Godfall, the single player always online games can be canceled and thus terminated. By January of the next year, only months after launch, there were reports coming from previous developers stating that they knew that the game would tank. In a shocking turn of events, even with the failure of the recently launched title in context, Skybound, the parent company in charge of handling entertainment and video games for the Walking Dead franchise, would completely cut ties from the Overkill's The Walking Dead. This was shocking, not just because of how fast it happened, but the fact that it happened, period. But also because technically The Walking Dead was still releasing the rest of the game as it only had released on Steam. 
When things are so bad, the parent IP holder is coming in and canceling things after waxing poetic about the game, you know things are bad. Although 505 Games, who was in charge of the console versions, tried reassuring fans that their versions of the game were still being worked on, the console versions would also be canceled ultimately. The population of the multiplayer cooperative shooter would peak at 791 at the end of the month. This would prove to be a crucial blow to Starbreeze, as it would later come out in a tell-all article with writer Wesley Yin Poole, Starbreeze by May of 2019 was in dire straits, so much so that they determined that they didn't have enough capital to last the next year. With putting much of their eggs in the basket of their Walking Dead game, and the fading Payday 2, things were looking grim for the Swedish company despite public appearances. Starbreeze would completely restructure their company by the end of the year, resulting in millions of losses, or as a result of. Bo Anderson, the creator of the original company Overkill, would leave following the megadrama and become nearly unreachable. Bo was characterized very negatively by the staff and former developers of Starbreeze, and those who worked on the Walking Dead game. Described as a smooth-talking over-promiser who seemed more interested in reaching the stars than creating realistic goals or expectations. Most of Starbreeze's failures at the time had been attributed to him, including multiple failed partnerships. Bo was a significant drain on those who worked on the project, and at the company in general, and his lightning rod nature was ultimately harmful for the company and project. After the failure with the company restructure, not only were key talent lost alongside Bo, the company was slowly being acquired by other companies and losing further control and identity. Overkill was only known for payday, but a common misconception is that they're... that's where things start. They don't. Bo and his brother actually started with another company, dubbed Grin. Grin would grow as the company seemingly having some level of success. The reason why I sound sarcastic is that if you look at the titles that were actually worked on, none of them are above AC quality. I don't feel controversial when saying that, but Overkill hit it big with Payday, and not Grin. What I mean is outside of Payday, they had never done anything even remotely successful. That's why Overkill's The Walking Dead looks and plays a lot like Payday, because that's the extent of their game development largely thus far. In a sense, we shouldn't be that shocked or surprised this was an outcome, with developers performing under crunch with shaky leadership and learning a new engine on the job. It's not a surprise that the project didn't do well, but it starts further back than that. There were serious concerns that the Payday team, which is what we should be calling them, could do anything other than Payday. To make matters worse, Payday is their thing. And yet with the recent launch of yet another Payday title, we have an even worse reception than ever before. Payday 3 has launched this previous September, and has a painful 42% score from 34,000 different gamers. The game not only makes many of the same mistakes of the previous games, or games like this The Walking Dead game, such as always being online, having a repetitive grindy loop, and more, it actually regresses, losing lobby systems, pre-chat, and even the crime net. You can't play it alone. You can't play it offline, and you have to matchmake to do basically anything in the game, such as the Walking Dead game, too. This was made even worse by an even shakier launch than the Walking Dead game, making it basically unplayable for many players for days. Starbreeze wasn't just struggling anymore, and it wasn't secretly struggling either. They were floundering publicly, and there were and are serious concerns about the fate of the company, period, especially with the recent failures of their most successful projects. In a sense, this wasn't just about death of a game about Overkill's The Walking Dead game, it was about the company itself. With the music playing, that means that this case has come to an end, detectives, and we have gathered more than enough clues to reach our final deduction. Why did Overkill's The Walking Dead fail? Well, if you haven't been paying attention... Engine issues. Lack of story and strong presentation. Repetitive and boring gameplay loop. Poor leadership and decision making, trouble development, and forced crunch. Overkill's The Walking Dead won't be a game that is remembered, and I wish that I could sit here and say that, hey, at least there's a chance for another quality of The Walking Dead game. But considering The Walking Dead Destinies just launched and was just as mediocre, if not more, than Overkill's The Walking Dead game, sadly it seems like the magic or potential of a good The Walking Dead game is on hold for the moment or maybe forever. As I have a habit of doing or trying, I like to end these videos on a positive note. Death and failure isn't all negative, after all. 
But with Overkill's The Walking Dead, there's very little positive that I can leave you guys with. This video was more of a lesson into how you're never too big to fail, and not paying close enough attention and care to source material can just doom you from the start. Thanks for watching.